Oh, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Marissa Tsort? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing you by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. Marissa Tsort was born on April 30, 1990. By 2018, she lived on North 6th Street in Wausau, Wisconsin, along with her boyfriend, Adam. Marissa had five children. In 2010, Marissa was accused of leaving one of her children in a hot car on multiple occasions. According to a criminal complaint, Marissa had been convicted in 2015 of misdemeanor bail jumping and obstructing an officer. On June 7, 2017, a three-month-old boy sustained a skull fracture while being cared for by Marissa. She was babysitting the boy. No charges were filed in that case. On August 2, 2018, Marissa was babysitting an eight-month-old girl when the girl was injured. Marissa told the police that the girl had fallen off a couch. A physician who treated the girl said that the injuries were not consistent with a fall. Marissa was not charged in this case until sometime around October 11, 2018. By this time, Marissa had lost custody of four of her five children. This did not prevent her from babysitting other people's children, including two sons of a friend of hers named Heather. One of Heather's sons was named Benson. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On October 18, 2018, Heather dropped off her two sons, including two-month-old Benson, at Marissa's home sometime between 3.30 and 4 p.m. Adam was not home at the time. He was hunting. Heather received a text message from Marissa at 5.57 p.m. In the message, Marissa stated that her name was on a local media website because she had been charged with mistreating a child. Presumably, Marissa was referring to the criminal charge from a week earlier, which stemmed from the incident in August. Marissa said that she was not allowed to be in contact with children and requested that Heather not reveal the fact that Marissa was babysitting Heather's two children. At about 9.20 p.m., Heather picked up Benson from Marissa's residence. Benson was in his car seat with a hat pulled over his eyes. Heather thought that he was sleeping, which would not be unusual for that time of night. Heather, her children, and her sister went to a laundromat on North 3rd Avenue in Wausau. At around 9.45 p.m., Heather removed Benson from the car seat and realized that he was cold to the touch and not breathing. Heather's sister sent a text message to Marissa at 9.50 p.m. stating, quote, You killed my sister's blank baby, unquote. First responders arrived, but there was nothing they could do to save Benson. His legs were rigid and remained in a seated position, like his knees were bent. This was consistent with the shape of the car seat. The police believed that Benson died at around 4.30 p.m. that day. Understandably, investigators were highly interested in having a discussion with Marissa. They traveled to her residence, but there was no answer at the door. The police broke in and searched her residence, but no one was there. They were able to track her cell phone to the Plaza Hotel on North 17th Street. The police arrived there at 4.15 a.m., now on October 19. After discovering that Marissa's boyfriend, Adam, was also at the hotel, the police spoke to both of them. Marissa said that she had cared for Benson earlier, and he was fine. She acted like nothing was amiss. When she was asked why she left her home to go to the hotel, Marissa claimed that she wanted to go swimming with Adam and her son. When the police told Marissa that Benson was dead, she replied, quote, Why is he dead? Unquote. She said that she did not know what happened. The police knew that Marissa was aware of Benson's death because Heather's sister had sent a text message to Marissa containing that information. Marissa claimed that her phone was off, but in reality, it was on. That's how the police found her at the hotel. Eventually, Marissa admitted that Benson had died while under her care. 
She said that she noticed that Benson was cold and not making any noise. She didn't call the authorities because she did not want her other child to be taken from her. Marissa said that her boyfriend Adam was not home when she discovered that Benson was dead. When Adam arrived home, she did not tell him about Benson's death, so he didn't find out until the police told him at the hotel. Marissa put a snowsuit and hat on Benson's body, put him in a car seat, and took him to McDonald's along with her boyfriend Adam, Marissa's son, and Heather's other son. When the police spoke to Adam, he claimed that Benson was whining and crying during the trip to McDonald's. The police found this difficult to believe because, according to Marissa, Benson was already dead by this point. The group remained at McDonald's for about 15 minutes before returning to Marissa's residence. When Heather came by to pick up Benson and her other son, Marissa did not inform Heather that Benson was dead. Furthermore, she pulled a hat over Benson's eyes so that Heather would not discover the truth. Marissa let Heather pick up Benson, believing that he was fine. The police asked Marissa to return with them to her residence and conduct a reenactment of how she found Benson dead. She showed the police how Benson had been on his stomach in a playpen when she discovered that he was not alive. During the reenactment, Marissa was smiling and laughing. Marissa was arrested for her prior charge as the investigation into Benson's death continued. An autopsy revealed that Benson had sustained at least three separate blunt force injuries to his head and a fractured tailbone. All the injuries occurred around the time of his death. One or more of the head injuries caused his death. Marissa was interviewed by the police again. This time she was easier to find because she was in jail. She eventually confessed to killing Benson, but claimed it was an accident. Marissa admitted to being frustrated and said that maybe she put him down too hard in a playpen. After killing him, she tried to revive him. This contradicts her first interview when she said that she did nothing to help him after discovering that he was dead. Marissa was charged with first-degree intentional homicide. She was pregnant with her sixth child when she was sent to jail. Eventually, Marissa was allowed to plead no contest to first-degree reckless homicide. She also pleaded guilty to the charge from the August 2018 incident. In 2022, Marissa received 40 years in prison for the reckless homicide and three years for the other charge. The sentences were to run consecutively. Marissa was also sentenced to 20 years of extended supervision. She was given credit for three years of time served, which left her with 40 years. In Wisconsin, an inmate can earn up to 25% off their sentence for good behavior, which means that Marissa could be released when she is around 62 years old. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. Some people are upset that the state did not pursue the first-degree intentional homicide charge and try to get a life sentence for Marissa. I think the state was concerned that they could not prove Marissa killed Benson intentionally. Taking a case to trial always runs the risk of an acquittal and costs taxpayers a lot of money. I think the plea deal was reasonable. Marissa will be in prison for a long time, and even when she gets out, she will probably never be around children because of the 20 years of extended supervision. Item number two, Marissa originally pleaded not guilty by reason of mental disease or defect. She claimed that her brain had been damaged due to substance use. There is no question that Marissa had a challenging history. She was abandoned by her father and allegedly mistreated by her stepfather. Marissa's mother had difficulty regulating her intake of substances and sold Marissa to two drug dealers in exchange for drugs. Marissa became a substance user as well. Item number three, Marissa appeared to be highly manipulative. After she was placed in jail, she maintained her relationship with Adam, but also found a male pen pal. She told the pen pal that she would have sex with him and move in with him after she was released from prison. There was only one catch. He needed to give her money. Considering that Marissa was facing life in prison, it is reasonable to believe that her pen pal wasn't good at math. 
Marissa was also able to extract money from Adam. I guess he wasn't discouraged from romance by the murder part. Marissa may have been in jail, but it sounds like Adam was love's prisoner. Item number four, Marissa was extremely impulsive. She could not resist temptation and only focused on short-term goals. When Marissa had a need or desire, she tried to satisfy it immediately. When Marissa killed Benson, she already had a pending charge based on another incident that occurred when she was babysitting. Marissa could not even restrain herself at a time when she knew she was about to be arrested. She was so impulsive that nothing could stop her from being violent. Item number five, Marissa was cold and callous. During her interviews with the police, she only expressed concern about what was going to happen to her. She did not seem to be particularly concerned with Benson or other people that were affected by his murder. After killing Benson, Marissa did not call for help. Rather, she dressed her murder victim up in a snowsuit and pretended he was still alive. She didn't even tell her boyfriend that Benson was dead. There is this sense that Marissa did not need to be comforted. She did not have regret, remorse, a sense of shame, or any distressing emotions. After the murder, she was able to function just as well as she had been functioning before the murder. Marissa even put the car seat containing Benson's body in the booth at McDonald's as she and the others ate dinner. Marissa was not under distress sitting next to her murder victim while eating. When the police paid a visit to Marissa at the hotel, they found her in bed asleep. She was able to sleep just a few hours after committing murder. Item number six, what do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. When Marissa was young, she was devalued by her caregivers. She was treated as an inconvenience and as an object. Marissa learned from the people who harmed her. She adopted their attitudes and came to view children as expendable and irritating. At the same time, Marissa had feelings in the other direction. She somehow realized that children were important, but really didn't understand that concept. Marissa wanted to love and value children, but she didn't know how to experience those feelings. She surrounded herself with children. She had several children of her own and would frequently babysit. She was desperately trying to create the same conditions that other people had, hoping that she could develop the same feelings that other people had. Unfortunately for Marissa, those feelings of love and compassion for children never arrived. Instead, Marissa was overwhelmed with anger and aggression. When these traits combined with her impulsivity, they became deadly. Marissa could not tolerate children who were crying or otherwise making noise. She may have assigned malicious intent to them, like the children were deliberately trying to aggravate her. I think that Marissa beat Benson out of anger and felt satisfaction after killing him. She accomplished her goal of keeping him quiet and then moved forward with the grisly task of trying to conceal her involvement. Most offenders in Marissa's situation would have tried to dispose of the murder victim's body or blame someone else, but not Marissa. She was so confident in her ability to convince people that she was a loving caregiver, she simply pretended her victim was still alive. Marissa was ready to put the entire situation behind her, eager to pursue her next gratification. But instead of being immediate, it will be about 30 or 40 years away. Now moving to my final thoughts. Marissa is someone who should have never been around children, but she believed that she should have been around as many as possible. If she had just a little bit of insight, Marissa could have seen that she was dangerous, but she did not have any insight. She did not understand herself, and she did not understand how others perceived her. Ultimately, Marissa transformed into a caregiver who was even worse than the caregivers who raised her, a feat that many may have believed to be impossible. Those are my thoughts in the case of Marissa Tsort. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.